been too much. Too much for the rest of the NFC and the Green Bay Packers trying to equal the Dallas Cowboys with a record of 13 and 2. It's all about layering in the cold and that's what Devin Hester tried to do to no avail. Trying to put his helmet over his ski cap <laughs> and that didn't work. <laughs> Meanwhile how far can Crosby kick it in this weather and Hester should be standing up at the 30 yard line. Well and he's kicking it right into the teeth of this wind Joe. It hits a wall of wind. Hester will get a little bit of a head of steam. No he won't. He's got to get on that ball. It's a live ball. And Hester goes nowhere. Hester was standing too deep and almost didn't get up to that football. It's a live ball. And he was up to make the play. Little pushing and shoving afterward as the Bears try and get up for this game. And now Kyle Orton will try somehow working with the wind behind him to a certain degree, although it is gusting. He will try and figure out how to take apart this Green Bay defense, which comes in ranked 11th in the NFL. There's Aaron Campman, who has 12 sacks, tied for fourth in the National Football League on first down. Handoff is to Adrian Peterson, and Peterson a nice gain of four over the right side. You know, Kyle Orton making his second start. He started last week in that game and had not played since his rookie season when he because of the injuries to Rex Grossman and he got his opportunity as a young player in this league went 10 and 5 won 10 games and has been put on the shelf since then and I know that he's hoping to be able to make a pretty good showing and show the staff what he's capable of doing it's going to be very difficult for him to do that in these conditions today. How about Peterson two carries a first down this time he gets eight. Corey Williams downfield to make the stop and it's worth pointing out what you said just moments ago in our open. This is a day weather wise that certainly gives the advantage to the Chicago Bears with their ground gain although it hasn't been really good either but they are more of a team built to run the ball they just haven't done it that well yeah, yeah you know I agree I, Joe I, I don't know that they're so much built to run the ball better as much as their passing game is not nearly as good as what Green Bay's is Peterson again three plays three carries this time no gain Justin Harrell the first round pick was there to make the play and you've got to believe that you know they are going to obviously there's going to be a heavy dose of running the football for both Chicago and Green Bay and then when they do decide to make some throws you know you're just not going to be able to get a lot of throws down the field even even in that 15 18 yard range it's going to be very difficult to drive the ball through the wind and even when the winds at your back I expect a lot of short three step drops get the ball out and see if you can't maybe complete something. to Peterson and Peterson is wrapped up by Corey Williams good play there was some room behind Williams a gain of only one just to give you the statistics the Chicago Bears are the worst ranked rushing offense in the league which is shocking and for a team that a couple of years ago was seventh best in yards per rush in 2005 at four point three per carry they are down to three point one which is the third lowest mark in team history. Yeah, as the graph shows there, they, they weren't real good running the football last year. They just played really great defense and then, of course, special teams. Third down and nine, first throw. Orton completes to Desmond Clark, the tight end, first down. That had some zip on it from Kyle Orton, who played collegiately at Purdue, and he's one for one. Well this is a nice job of, of getting the ball out in front because again you really can't determine what kind of impact the wind's going to have on the ball as to whether or not you're going to be able to throw it where you want to throw it. But Desmond Clark doing a good job and actually you know, when you look at this group offensively whether it's the wide receiver position the offensive line the running back the quarterback it's been the tight end position that has been the most productive unit for this group. Peterson again over the left side and just hit a wall gained a yard Cedric Benson who was the fourth overall pick in 2005 out of Texas was lost to the Chicago Bears with a broken leg November 25th the game here at home against Denver 
he had had a couple of decent games prior to going down with a broken leg, but he was really in the category of a disappointment getting the bulk of the carries the first part of the year. That's right, Joe. He had not shown much throughout must most of the season and it wasn't until the last couple of games prior to him going down and as Lovey Smith said he's still a question mark going into next year nothing as Adrian Peterson was smacked and Corey Williams was in there first guy to hit him Michael Montgomery helped out and it's third down and nine you know, that Green Bay defensive front they've, they've had some injuries Johnny Jolly Colin Cole and then today they're going without Ryan Pickett and so they're very thin but Corey Williams as you said involved in the play he's been banged up as well throughout most of the season but he's starting to get more and more healthy he says he feels better than what he has all season long and that's going to be important for this group as they get through this game and then clearly once they get into postseason Green Bay defensively has been outstanding on third down Peterson first down Chicago and they love it here at Soldier Field. 16 yards on a screen and the third first down of this opening possession for the Chicago offense. Yeah, and that's already one more third down conversion than they had all of last week against Minnesota. And you see, I mean, they set this thing up pretty good. You got Olin Krutz out in front and then just let him pick his spot. A lot more speed in the huddle for Chicago now is Garrett Wolf. The rookie running back is in there, not a big guy at all. And Devin Hester was in the slot as Garrett Wolf carries it for three yards. This is a guy, Garrett Wolf, that is listed at 5'7, 186 pounds. And you can see him walking back to the huddle against those big bodies of the Green Bay Packers. He is tiny. Yeah, if they if they have him listed at 5'7, he's probably 5'5, five because five, they always fudge on those things, but you know, I mean, I, he, I've seen him, especially here over the last couple of weeks, and the guy does have amazing quickness. I mean, whether or not he can hold up, time will tell. But he is the one guy who can take it the distance when he has the ball in his hands. Gets it on two consecutive carries, sticks his nose up in there, and picks up a nice gain of six. And it's a third and short coming up for the Chicago offense. That has been impressive here with their first possession. Well, that's a nice job. I mean, they've been able to move the football a little bit running it, and then they've converted on the third downs, and that's why they're keeping this drive alive. But to kind of go back to what you said, Joe, I mean, it's hard to be a running football team when you can't run the football, and that's been the problem for this Bears team all year long. Third down and a yard. Handoff. Wolf gets to the edge. First down again. Chicago as they continue to convert on third down. Nick Collins, the free safety, made the stop after a run of seven yards. And wouldn't Chicago love an early score here against Green Bay? And a good job by the fullback. You're going to see Jason McKee right here in the middle. He comes off. He's going to secure the edge right there on Nick Barnett, which then allowed Garrett Wolf to get out there. Some good blocking also on the edge by tight end John Gilmore. And, and when you get into these type of conditions, you're going to run a lot of two back sets, full backs in the backfield and with tight ends, two tight end, multiple sets to try to get some advantages within the running game. Garrett Wolf as penalty flags come in. It's a false start. John Gilmore, the tight end. False start. Number 85 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Quick game break. Let's go out to L.A. Here's Kurt. Well, the Giants at Buffalo, and Buffalo scores quickly. Opening possession, Trent Edwards finds Michael Gaines, and already they're up 7 nothing. And kind of appropriate, Joe, on a day where Kevin Everett is back in the stadium for the first time with the Bills. Yeah, Kurt, great moment, obviously, before that game. And I think the Giants have their hands full today, and if they do with the Bills at Buffalo, they do next week at home against New England. They could be in trouble. Garrett Wolf again. He's been busy, and on first and 15, he picks up four. You know, Green Bay, they can't like what's happening right here. I mean, you come into a game, as we said, with with these conditions, you know that the, you know, not that the Bears are anyway. I mean, they want to run the football. They've not thrown the football particularly well throughout the season, but you're going to get a heavy dose of the running game, and yet they've been able to move the football against them. And this 
this uh, Packers defense really, I mean, as strong as they are outside with their corners and Al Harris and Charles Woodson, this front seven's a pretty good group too. But right now, Chicago's having their way. 12 plays, 10 of them have been running plays, and Orton's three for three as he hits McKee. And the fullback is forced out right at the marker. Looks to be a little short of first down yardage. So another third and short coming up. Well, the Packers bring Brady Papinga. He was very active last week in pressuring the quarterback. And when you bring pressure, then you've got to be able to get somebody out there on the fullback. Nick Barnett responsible, but not until Orton was able to get the ball into his hands and pick up a pretty good game. Third down and one. Peterson. First down again, another third down conversion in Troy for a fan base that has been questioning the play calling of Ron Turner all season long. He has dialed up the right play seemingly every time he sent it in to Kyle Orton so far in this game. Well, probably that, and then in addition to that, these players are doing a little bit better job of executing. And you know, I know that they're they're eliminated from the playoffs, but you know, they get an opportunity to, to play their biggest rival within their division, the Green Bay Packers, a team that they beat earlier in the season. And you know that it means a lot to these players to try to sweep them this season. Peterson inside the 10, picked up four. The Chicago Bears are four for four on third down so far on this drive. It's going to be at least a 15 play drive here at the start of their day and this is an offensive line that has John St. Clair starting in left guard in place of Terrence Metcalf. You, know, you say the Bears four for four on this drive and they're they're doing it against the Green Bay defense that came into this game leading the National Football League stopping people on third down. Peterson. Adrian Peterson not much back to the line of scrimmage maybe got half a yard Nick Barnett the middle linebacker who probably should have been named to the Pro Bowl at least his teammates certainly thought so with the year he's had in the middle at Green Bay made the stop it's been a drive that's consumed over 10 minutes off the clock here in the first quarter well that's one way to keep number four from hurting you when you talk about Nick Barnett, I, I agree with you, Joe. You always wonder how a guy's going to come back and react when he's disappointed and learned that he did not make the Pro Bowl. But I think he's had himself a great year. Orton, end zone, Clark overthrown. And it's fourth down, so the field goal unit comes on to the field and with this cold day look at the right hand and the knuckles the skin just cracking on the money maker for Kyle Orton. Yeah, and you're not sure if that's just from taking the snap or if he actually you know hit it on something but there's no question that in these conditions you know the hands dry out pretty good and and it's going to become more and more difficult to handle the football as we move through this game. Movement up front and a 26 yard try is about to turn into we'll wait and see if it's against Green Bay it's going to be awfully close. False start number 65 the offense the five yard penalty is still fourth down. So that's no good as Patrick Manley the center had a little hitch. His backside, a little movement, not a whole lot, but this is certainly no chip shot. A 31-yard try with the wind gusting and whipping around. This is not easy. Yeah, not easy at all. And you would normally think, hey, a five-yard penalty, what's the big deal? Now it's a 30-yard field goal attempt. But, you know, this wind, the way it's blowing, it just gives it an extra five yards to move it outside the goalpost. This one is hit well and good. Didn't have a lot of distance, got over the crossbar, an impressive opening drive for Lovey Smith's offense. Down the field and a drive that consumed over 10 minutes off the clock. 3-0, Chicago. Box is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines convenient non-stop flights, it's like having your own company plane.
Good work by that offensive line for Chicago. A 3 nothing advantage. You know they wanted to come away with seven, and now Brett Favre will go to work. These return men are starting awfully deep for the kind of win that these kickers are dealing with. This thing is going to end up at the 25-yard line and dropped. That's Montgomery. I, why would you put the return men back by the goal line? There's no way their kicker is going to get the ball anywhere near getting it down toward the end zone. So Montgomery got his shot at glory and was just happy to get back on top of the football. Here comes attack. They are third best in the NFL. The number two passing attack, but good luck on a day like this. They start with three wide receivers and a single back, Ryan Grant. Favre gets it to Grant, and he has plenty of room to run. Ryan Grant runs right into Tillman, who brings him down in midfield. 24-yard run to start the day for Grant, who has taken over the running back spot for Green Bay. Well, really well designed and executed there by the Green Bay Packers. You're going to see the line here blocked this way. And then Grant, he's just looking for the cutback, and there it is. Now, if he stays inside of Greg Jennings there, he might have been able to take it all the way to a touchdown. Grant again. This time he is met in the hole and dropped by Jamar Williams. Jamar Williams is getting the start because Lance Briggs, who's a free agent to be, is out. He is inactive, but he is not alone. For Chicago, Nathan Vasher started last week, or at least played last week for the first time after missing 10 games with a groin. He's out, and Mark Anderson is out with a knee. Briggs is bothered by a bad hip. So three big players not out there defensively for Chicago. Play action from Favre. Drops it off to Donald Driver. And Driver is brought down by Erlacher. A gain of four. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. Is it too early to vote for play of the day? Buffalo and the Giants. Trent Edwards finds Roscoe Parrish. And look at him lay out for this one. Oh, 42 yards on the catch. Set up a four-yard touchdown pass to Lee Evans. And Buffalo's on top of the Giants. 14-0 after two offensive possessions, Joe. Wow. The Giants, their collapse has started early. Yeah, now they're today they're playing without Jeremy Shockey. You know, that team, that Giants team has been struggling for about the last six to seven ball games. Over the head of Favre, and he just covers up. So the conditions, the wind affects everything. Long snaps even on this punt coming up with Rob Davis at center, and now with Scott Wells at center. This one took off a little, and Favre couldn't get his hands around it. Yeah, it looked like it might have knuckled back there just a little bit, but Favre just not able to handle it. You know, you can tell some of the things that you just take for granted, taking a shotgun snap, you know, even right here on a punt. Like that. John Ryan is swallowed up inside the 35. Chicago takes over. Ion Badejo, who's going to the Pro Bowl as a special team performer, was back there. But once Ryan dropped the snap, he was a goner. Good snap, by the way. Ryan just dropped it. You know, good snap, but when you get into weather like this, as cold as it is, you know, your hands, it, it's, it's, the ball gets slick as it gets colder. And, and so if you're not accustomed to handling it like that, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he comes back and he tries wearing gloves the next time. Starting at the Green Bay 34, handoff to Peterson. And Adrian Peterson gets it to the 31, picked up three. Brady Papinga was there for the stop. And we are already approaching the final minute here in the first quarter. 
Now, I know last week Chicago had some opportunities. The defense was able to able to give them the ball short field and and yet they weren't able to really do anything with it on that first possession. They moved the ball down but they weren't able to get a touchdown had to settle for a field goal. You know these are the types of drives where you got to come away with touchdowns and flags before the snap. So we'll get the call from Triplett. False start. Number 78 in the offense. Five yard penalty. It's still second down. It's John St. Clair, who's now the starting left guard for Chicago. Jeff Triplett and his crew spent dinner last night with 10 kids from the boys and girls clubs in the northern Chicago area. And yesterday was a 50 degree day. Beautiful day to walk around Chicago. Today, the wind chill of minus one. Second and 12, good little move by Adrian Peterson who went right around Cullen Jenkins. Picked up six, big B on the tackle. And if the Chicago Bears want to go warm up, they do not have to snap it again before the end of the quarter. What a golden opportunity, by the way, this is today for Kyle Orton. It's not a great day weather-wise, but he certainly has a chance today to make a name for himself after that 10 and 5 record in his rookie season. He has an opportunity before him on a rough day matched up against Brett Favre who is over there all warm and huddled up. It's a nasty day in Chicago. Second quarter when we come back 3 nothing Bears. Well the Packers haven't at all the Bears have but have just a three point lead. It's third and seven in what is definitely four down territory for the Chicago offense and make it third and 12 is Desmond Clark. Blame the wind Desmond blame the wind. Well there was some movement there on the Green Bay Packers defensive front and then Desmond Clark then he had a false start. It'd be interesting to see you know how the officials rule this was he drawn off sides because of the defensive movement. Watch him two times though he false starts. Watch up here at the top false in the slot. 88 the offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. That's already four false starts against Chicago in one quarter of play basically. Yeah they're picking up right where they left off last week. I mean that was a big problem for them in that game. They had a number of pre snap penalties and it's just the double you know, there's double a lot of reasons why this offense has struggled. But it's hard to be effective offensively when you're having those kind of penalties. Orton's in trouble and throws the football up for grabs. It's a hold against Chicago. And it certainly looked like Orton was very close to being in the grasp anyway. Aaron Campman and KGB were coming to get him, and the Packers look like they'll decline the hold. Holding. Offense number 57. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So you get the false start penalty, and what was a little bit more of a manageable third down and seven becomes third down and 12. Then you get the incompletion in the hold. So forget four down territory now, as Brad Maynard will try and pin the Packers close to their own end zone. Well, that was a good job by the Packers defense. I mean, the the Chicago Bears offense had a lot to do with it, but keeping them from getting any points on that drive. It's a line drive punt. It was a beauty. The crowd groaned. It couldn't have been any better. Just outside the 10, they'll mark it at the 11. Kyle Orton had nowhere to go on that third down and 12. 25 yard punt by Maynard, a good one, and the Packers have it at their own 11. It's for home field advantage. Last night at Carolina wasn't pretty at times. Green Bay trying to match him at 13 and 2 with a win today. Cowboys hold the tiebreaker because of their win on the 29th of November in Dallas over the pack. Hand off to Ryan Grant. Not a ton of running room right side. Got a yard and a half. Now, why is that important? All Packer fans sweat when they look at these numbers even on a cold day in Green Bay at home in his career against Dallas 2 and 0 on the road at Dallas 0 and 9 and you had something to do with that as he made us aware of again yesterday. Well you know, you know we had good teams and so did they there were a lot of good matchups but it, it does illustrate you know the importance of trying to secure home field advantage throughout the playoffs. 
Packers have to win today to have any hope of that. Second and eight. Grant nothing over the right side. Israel Adonaje was in the middle of it for Chicago. He's been a good player for the Bears this season. Third and long coming up for Green Bay. You know, to go back to that as far as playoff implications and home field advantage, I know going back to 1990, the teams that get the first round by and play at home in the divisional round, they win 78% of the time. However, the home team for the NFC Championship game, or actually for the NFC or AFC Championship game, they only win 57% of the time. So what it illustrates is that it's by far more important to get a first round bye as opposed to necessarily playing that championship game at home. Far in trouble and trying to set up a screen, which has been tough for the Packers to do. Israel Donage got up and knocked it away. And it's the screen game that has really struggled for Green Bay. That was a staple of this attack under Mike Holmgren and Mike Sherman. You know, one time, yeah, Green Bay was as good as anybody in the league. And I know in talking with Mike McCarthy, he said, hey, there's still an emphasis on our screen game right there. Israel Adonijay just does a nice job of batting that ball down. Devin Hester won't get it as the punt is blocked. Chicago takes over inside the 10. Ian Badejo comes away with a football as Ryan had to shift to get the punt, and it's Daryl McClover who comes in and smothers it off the foot of John Ryan. Well, the Chicago Bears, they got the best special teams units in the National Football League, and I know Mike McCarthy said, hey, that is actually the strength of this team, and we've got to do a very good job in that area. Well, they dropped the snap earlier on a punt. This time, they get the punt blocked. Adrian Peterson up the middle, Nick Barnett came in off the edge. Papinga was in there as well for Green Bay. And it's second and goal as a couple of the players get up and start shoving each other. And John Ryan's had a rough first half. Well, and, and we talked about it just a little bit earlier in that, you know, Chicago now has had good field position. They took the opening drive. They drove it down. They got close. They weren't able to come away with a touchdown. They got the short field because of the fumbled snap on the punt. Didn't do anything with it. Now they're in a great position again. And it's not going to take a lot of points to win this game today. They need to score. And by score, you mean touchdown, a three-yard gain by Adrian Peterson, and it's third down and goal. So do you want to try and run it into the end zone, or do you trust Kyle Orton to keep it and try and dump it over the defense to an open receiver in the back of the end zone? You know, I'm not so sure that if I'm Chicago that, you know, I keep it on the ground and run it, and even if you're not able to get the touchdown here on third down, you know, what do you have to lose? Make this a four-down territory. They do hand it. Peterson goes nowhere. Colin Jenkins made the play. Now it's fourth and goal. Orton saying, let's go for it. Yeah, I don't think there was any question, but they're going to settle for the for the field goal. And, and the reason I say make it four down territory, I don't think that a lot of points are going to be scored, obviously, because of the conditions. But a six point game really isn't a big deal. I mean, you're just talking one possession, one touchdown Green Bay. They take the lead again. Whereas I think if you're able to build a lead, a 10 point lead, I think in a, in a game like this is pretty significant regardless of who it is that you're playing on the other side. And now a timeout is taken. A 21 yard try. But Robbie Gold is forthcoming. McClover blocked the punt. Will it lead to three points? We'll find out. The Bears are going to. on a 21-yard field goal try after the timeout. They've had a change of heart. And they spread them out. Orton looking right the whole way, and he hits Muhammad right in the chest. Wide open, 
And it didn't even look like Masin Muhammad got his hands up. Well, yeah, I don't even know that he knew it was coming when it did. Keep take a look right there. The ball is out. Well, he's you know he saw it. He just he just never got his hands up to make the catch. Still three nothing Chicago. Introducing the Black CTS, the 2008 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Through what looked to be a perfect pass on fourth and goal. Packers take over with the ball at their own three. Favre is in trouble over the middle, and it's incomplete as Donald Lee had it hit off his hands, and then Danielle Manning got a pop in for good measure at the end of it. Meanwhile, the Packers now have started at their own 26, their own 11, and their own three. But the good news for them. The Bears have started at their own 20, got a field goal. At the Green Bay 34, got no points. And at the Green Bay 7-yard line, and got no points. Yeah, I mean, as bad a start as Green Bay has gotten off to, it only be down 3 to nothing is, is pretty good for them. Grant, nowhere to run. And this defense, Troy, which really looked like the Bears defense of old last week in Minnesota for the majority of that game. They look like they are inspired here against Brett Favre and would love to sweep the season series as a Goonley made that last play. Yeah I don't think you can underestimate what this game means for the Chicago Bears. Granted it's been a disappointing year and they all understand that they're going home after next week. There's not going to be any postseason play in their future this year. But this is a meaningful game. I mean, Lovey Smith has made it very clear from the time he took over as the head coach that they are going to beat the Green Bay Packers and have done a good job of doing that. Favre throws it low. It's caught, but short of a first down. A little breathing room now with fourth down coming. And let's go back to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, as John Ryan uh, takes the field, he really anticipated much of the trouble he's having today, but I don't think he knew it was going to be to this degree. Ryan told me before the game that the toughest thing on a day like this is just catching the ball. Remember, Ryan hails from Canada. He's played in awful weather before, but he said before the game, this is about as bad as he can remember. Back to you. All right, Pam, no gloves on his hands as he takes a high snap. And finally gets one away. Pretty good punt. Devin Hester on the Chicago side of midfield. A fair catch. What a punt by John Ryan. With these conditions, 47 yards. Bears have it up three. Football around a stadium that is planted right next to Lake Michigan. It is cold. First down for Chicago. Fourth possession. This time they start on their side of midfield, and Adrian Peterson picks up a yard and a half. Papinga on the stop for the Green Bay Packers. I remember when I got into this business, Troy, my dad told me, Nobody cares if the announcers are cold. Nobody at home cares if the announcers are hot. <laughs> It's cold, Dad. <laughs> it's well, chilly. There's not a lot of people that care, but I've got family back in Texas that cares. Yeah, I know. And they, you have family in St. Louis that cares. I, that's true. Adrian Peterson right up the middle. Woodson trying to rip the ball out, not making the tackle, and he's down inside the 35. 21-yard run by Adrian Peterson. And here are the Chicago Bears again with great field position. First down after this gallop by Adrian Peterson. Yeah, just straight downhill. I mean, these are the kind of conditions actually that are pretty good for Adrian Peterson. I mean, not a really a, a breakaway threat. He's a he's a grinding type running back, and he does a good job of finding his holes as he was able to do there and head downhill. This time he fights his way to the 30, picked up three. Nick Barnett on the tackle for Green Bay. We look ahead to next week's schedule. Week 17, final week of the regular season. Lions in the pack. That game in Green Bay, a good game early. Cowboys and Redskins, Troy and I will be there in Landover for that matchup. 
The built for tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. And by the way, due to flex scheduling next week, one of those games can be moved to prime time. It's very is forced out of bounds after a gain of three by Al Harris. Tell you, Kyle Orton's actually doing a pretty good job throwing the football right now. I mean, that ball there, and you know, we don't want to beat this thing to death, but the wind is gusting very, very much. And so even to throw what appears to be a pretty easy pass, that ball's moving. And as a receiver, you got to keep your eye on it and then adjust to it. But Kyle Orton has had some success, and he's delivered some pretty good balls on target. Third down and four, Garrett Wolf is going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. And I think uh, this is four down territory again. Well, I, I think when it comes to the Chicago Bears, I, I think that they ought to just approach every series as four down territory. Rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, why not? I know that, you know, Lovey Smith doesn't want to say it, hey, we're playing to win, and I understand that. But in the process of playing to win, you're also evaluating a lot of people. And Kyle Orton's being evaluated. And I'm not suggesting that Kyle Orton is going to be the starting quarterback next year, regardless of how well he may play. He's been here three years. They know what they have in him. But he could very well earn a spot on this team for next year. They hand it to Peterson, and he's got a first down. And up front, the Chicago Bears are winning those battles individually with Tate, St. Clair, Krutz, Garza, and Fred Miller at right tackle. Yeah, they've been pretty heavily criticized. You know, you watch Olin Krutz there in the middle, and he's able to get a little bit of movement, put his guy on the ground. And, you know, at every point, you know, there are guys that they, they have pride in what it is that they do. And I know that this group for the Chicago Bears, they have that. They're, they're a team that has not run the football particularly well, but they're doing a good job in this game. Peterson is swallowed up, falls forward to the 19-yard line, Papinga on the tackle. But let's say this, there have got to be, there had to have been times over the past year and a half where Kyle Orton is standing over there on the sideline thinking, what, do, what has to happen for me to get into a game? And finally, he gets another shot at it. And this is definitely an opportunity for him to prove what he can do here or increase his marketability around the league if he plays well these last two games. I know it's not much of a study with how effective it can be, but it's at least a chance. Second and nine, and a handoff to Wolf. What a hit. Papinga again. And a loss of three, and that's when 5-7 or 5-5 five, five or whatever Garrett Wolf is just disappeared. Well, Brady Papinga, he's a guy who is a downhill linebacker. And, you know, he's one of those guys, whenever you go back and you watch the film, you know, he's all over the place. You know, you don't, he doesn't get talked a lot about. It's more about Nick Barnett and then, you know, even a little bit of A.J. Hawk because he was a first-round pick. But Brady Papinga, to me, is the most active of all those linebackers, and he just shows up week in and week out and makes big plays like that. Already got five tackles. Screen to Wolf. Colin Jenkins, the first to get his hands on Garrett Wolf. It's fourth down, and let's go out to Kurt for a game break. Well, Buffalo turned the ball over on their own 23-yard line, and that helped the Giants. Brandon Jenkins takes it in, and the margin's cut in half. It's now 14-7 in the second quarter. You see the weather there in Buffalo? You thought it was bad in Chicago, huh, Joe? Yeah, the only difference is the temperatures, I know, a little higher in Buffalo, but with the wind blowing the way it is, and you add rain to that mix up there, that's an ugly day for the Giants and Bills. 35-yard try for Robbie Gold. the look on Robbie Gold's face. He yanked it, and the wind brought it back in. Wow. 6-0, Chicago leading Green Bay. 6-0, the Bears leading here with four minutes to go in the half. Kyle Orton has been able to move his team down the field, but let's state the obvious again. It's just a 6 point game and the Packers who have been dominated in the first half are a touchdown away from taking the lead. That looks like a shot from the ice ball. <laughs> Another 
short kick. And Ravel Martin takes it on a knee and gets to the 30. I am no genius. But I will tell you as the two teams start to rough it up a little and it gets broken up that there is absolutely no reason to put the primary kick returners back at the goal line. The wind, a wall of wind just knocked that last one down and that same wind just helped this one fade through the uprights to the delight of Lovey Smith. Start at their 30, down by six. Hand off to Grant. Grant out to the 34-yard line. And I'll ask my Hall of Fame quarterback partner friend up here in the booth, Troy Aikman, if you enjoyed playing football on days such no. as these. No, did not. Now, it didn't play in anything quite like this, but anytime the temperature got down to about 20 degrees, I, I was done. So... <laughs> You know, and, and that's why I was interested in talking with Brett Favre before the game. He said these are the worst conditions that I've ever tried to play in. And, you know, me saying that means nothing playing in Dallas, Texas. For him to say that, 17 years in Green Bay, that, that really is a statement. Grant! Foot race. Ryan Grant. Touchdown Green Bay. No flags. And just like that... After being dominated in this first half with 3.08 to play, the Packers are an extra point away from taking the lead. And again, they get this zone blocking out in front of them, and Ryan Grant, he's just able to see the cutback lane and, you know, really does have good vision as to where he's going with the football. I mean, you, he starts at front side, a little bit of a stretch, and there it is. And as soon as he sees the holes we saw a little bit earlier, I mean, he's off and running. That gives you a pretty good idea, too, is the kind of speed this guy has. The guy who came into the season as the fourth-string running back and since week eight is the second-leading rusher, second only to LaDainian Tomlinson. High snap and a great job on the hold by John Ryan. 7-6. to six. The Packers had one first down prior to this play. 66 yards from Ryan Grant. And on this cold, windy day here in Chicago, Brett Favre and the Packers out in front. For the Green Bay Packers, their first play, a 24-yard Ryan Grant run. Then they went 11 plays and had a total of 15 yards offensively prior to that last 66-yard touchdown run by Ryan Grant. So that's been the offense today. Nothing from Brett Favre, where the odds are stacked against any quarterback trying to sling the ball around, and it's 7-6 to six, Green Bay. And one thing we can't overlook is the job that John Ryan did in holding and taking that high snap on the extra point to get it down, and Crosby knocked it through. Good kick here over the head of Devin Hester and into the end zone. And the Bears down one will start at their 20. You know, you look at Darren College, the left guard, and the block that he makes, which actually gets Ryan Grant off and going. He gets him on the ground there, and that created the cutback lane for Ryan Grant. I mean, he's got great vision and just does a good job of knowing exactly where the holes are. And once he gets into the end zone and scores, he knew that Darren College was the guy who made the key block, which made it all happen. And here's that extra point. It just even on a short snap, on a field goal try, or on an extra point, the ball's sailing. And John Ryan, a nice job of grabbing it, getting it down for the go-ahead point. This one is just gunned and incomplete for Mark Bradley. Second down and 10 with three minutes to play in the half. This January, the All-State Bowl Bash comes to Fox, beginning with the AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic, followed by the All-State Sugar Bowl, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, FedEx Orange Bowl, and concluding with the All-State BCS National Championship game, LSU Ohio State, the All-State Bowl Bash begins New Year's Day only on Fox. Now, just count up all the bowls that are played. 32 bowl games overall. Teams with... 500 records are playing in bowl games. Here's Adrian Peterson. He's got nowhere to go. Campman out on the edge, makes the play. There was nobody happier when the Packers just took the lead 
Then our good friend Lee Remmel as Green Bay just took their first time out. Now Lee Remmel today is back in Green Bay. He's going to retire next month officially. By not being here today, he is missing his first Packer Bear game in the last 123 meetings between the two. And for a guy that's been involved either with the written press or with the club specifically since 1945, he's a guy that is very much a part of Green Bay Packer history, and we miss seeing him uh, this weekend and certainly any time we meet with these Packers and don't get a chance to see our friend Lee Rummel. Boy, isn't that the truth. And you know, this Packer organization and all of us that follow the Green Bay Packers and work so closely with them when we have a game, you know, we're going to miss not working with Lee Remmel as well. And, you know, what a Green Bay Packer historian he is. I've had a lot of great conversations with him, as you know, especially about Vince Lombardi and, you know, some of the history going back to that era. And hopefully Remmel's doing well and enjoying the ball game. So third down and seven. Adrian Peterson carries it on third and seven. That's already 21 carries for Peterson in this half. And Green Bay will use another timeout. They'll be left with one as they're about to get it back. Cullen Jenkins made that last play to force the fourth down. And the punt team is on the field for Chicago. So the playoff picture looks like this as we are in the second to last weekend in the NFL calendar Dallas out in front at 13 and 2 Green Bay trying to match them. Green Bay will host Detroit next week. That is the cold shaky drawing of the right hand of Troy Aikman. Well I was just saying you know those those teams right there are to me where it gets really really interesting. I mean the, the top four we know what they are we know what's happening but man when it comes down to you know Minnesota New Orleans Washington the Giants you know how all that shakes up I mean it's uh, it's a pretty complicated you know thing right now and some of it will clear up after today's games and and then obviously next week but it should make next weekend a lot of fun. The key team in that, at least the one team that can make it a lot easier, the Giants, and they're about to tie the Buffalo Bills. This is Will Blackman from inside the 40. Pretty good punt considering, and the tackle is made by Nick Roach. Eight-yard return by Will Blackman. Brett Favre drafted back in 1991 the first three quarterbacks drafted Dan McGuire Mark's brother 16th overall two career wins as a starter Todd Marinovich with the LA Raiders 24th overall three career wins and then 33rd overall was Brett Favre of the Atlanta Falcons 159 career wins and by the way of the 13 quarterbacks drafted in 1991 only Brett Favre played past 1999 starting his 252nd consecutive game during the regular season and he throws low for Greg Jennings. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. After Buffalo got a roughing the kicker penalty on fourth and 11, the Giants' very next play, Brandon Jacobs, the longest run of his career, a 43-yard touchdown, and what was a 14-0 Buffalo lead, now even at 14 apiece, Joe, Troy, and Pam. All right, thank you, Kurt. Second down and 10. So far, Brett Favre. Two for five for nine yards. But a one point lead. Boy, the Bears sniffed out that screen early. And it was almost picked off. Brian Grant, the intended receiver, and the screen game is just dead for Green Bay. Well, you know, Alex Brown almost got his hands on that one. And the thing about it is, is, you know, we see these games each week. And there's Alex Brown who had an opportunity to possibly intercept that one. And they just know because as soon as a defensive lineman gets engaged with the, with the offensive line and they sense that the offensive lineman is going to let them go, they, they are so good now at knowing that the screen is coming that they just fall underneath it. And that's why not just with Green Bay, you just don't see many teams running the screen pass very well anymore. On third down, Favre has to scramble, flips high. It's nearly picked off by Tillman. He had a touchdown staring him right in the face, was all alone on that side of the field as that throw sailed. 
and Tillman just could not bring it in. I mean, you, you, you look at this, it's, it's like a catcher getting mixed up on signals, you know, and all of a sudden getting a screwball when he thought he was going to get a curveball. I mean, he's out there, he's trying to navigate the wind as well and where that football's going, and, you know, it's hard on everybody right now. Bad snap, and this one is tipped. And the Bears, with two minutes and 19 seconds left, will take over just on their side of the 50. You think John Ryan's having any fun? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to mark it just shy of the 45-yard line, and John Ryan <laughs> would like to just head home. <laughs> Mike McCarthy doesn't look like he's enjoying himself either. This? You, know, you see that ball come in, and he, it was moving on him, and then you're trying to... To get, it, you know, I mean, he's trying to get the punt, punt off. His timing is completely thrown off, and then it comes right off the side of his foot. Yeah, I thought side that. Of his, side of his shin. That thing was tipped. It wasn't. It just it moved when he dropped it onto his foot, and it was a nine-yard punt. Here's Garrett Wolf, hey, and there's A.J. Hawk. And that could take us to the two-minute warning. The Bears, with the football, will have second and ten. Two timeouts left, down by a point. Sean Landetta, are you watching somewhere? Like a giant stadium with the ball moving, dropping it to his foot. 7-6 Green Bay, two minutes. John Ryan shaking his head during the entire break. He's had four attempted punts, <laughs> one block, a fumbled snap, 56 punt yards. But again, the one good thing he did was take in that high snap. There we are through the snow on the extra point, which is the difference in the game. So through all this, Green Bay is up seven to six with two minutes left in the half. Second down and ten for Kyle Orton. Four man rush, a screen for Garrett Wolf. Olin Krutz out in front of it, and Garrett Wolf shows his speed and is down inside the 25. Woodson saved a touchdown. Well, he sure did. And the Bears, they didn't seem to have any problems running their screen pass. You know, they're able to get the ball into the hands of Garrett Wolf. And again, I mean, the guy's got such great quickness. And a little guy is able to get him behind the block there of Olin Cruz. And then you got to try to get him on the ground. And as you said, Joe, Charles Woodson doing a great job of staying alive and going after him and saving a touchdown. Woodson came a long way to get him. Also avoided that horse collar tackle. 33 yard catch and run by Wolf. Orton throws, pass complete to Berrien. Down inside the 10. Plenty of time left, over a minute and two timeouts for Chicago. And Woodson just kind of turned him loose. You know, they're in man to man coverage there. And, and then Bernard Berrien was able to get the completion, but. You know, Kyle Orton doing a good job throwing the football. Here's Bernard Berry in and Charles Woodson on him. And they run the pivot route, and then he just kind of lets up. And I'm not sure exactly why, but, you know, a good throw by Kyle Orton. Normally, you would say, well, those are throws that you make in the National Football League. But, you know, to point out again, I mean, nothing can be taken for granted here in this game. And, and Kyle Orton, who is not the most accurate of throwers, but he does have a good arm. And in these conditions, being able to drive the ball as he has done, is really serving him well. And one thing that needs to be pointed out is the middle part of the field has been resotted. You could see the left foot by Woodson slip in the old area, the older grass nearer the sidelines, and he couldn't close on that throw at all. And then he was just playing catch up, trying to get his hands on Berrien. So it's first and goal. The Visa halftime report coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie, and Jimmy scores and highlights from around the league. And, you know, the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. 56 seconds left. Chicago elected to use one of their two remaining timeouts there moments ago. Back to the air, and now Rasheed Davis didn't have his head turned around and wasn't ready for a rocket from Kyle Orton. Yeah, a little bit like what happened to Moose and Muhammad in, in the field because it's cold and these guys have a lot of layers on in order to stay warm. So their legs are not as lively and as fresh as what they normally would be. And so when you're heavy legged 
and now you're trying to run a route and you've got a quarterback who's driving the ball the way that Kyle Orton is. It's getting on him in a hurry and they haven't been able to haul those two in. Orton six out of 11 with three drops. Adrian Peterson, touchdown Chicago. the drive the 33 yard screen to Garrett Wolf to set up the touchdown run by Adrian Peterson his third touchdown of the season well good drive there by the Chicago Bears and a good job by offensive coordinator Ron Turner mixing in some of the passes in addition to the running game and not just saying that we cannot throw the football been more impressive throwing it under these conditions than Favre has so far in the half. With 48 seconds left. It's a six point Chicago lead. That last possession started with the nine yard punt from Ryan. On second down and 10, a screen for 33 yards to Garrett Wolf, chased down by Woodson. And after the incompletion, the eight yard touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Well, the one thing about Garrett Wolf is I, I think when you look at the Chicago Bears this season, they really have not had any real big play guys. I mean, they thought that Devin Hester would be that guy this year. His development as a wide receiver has not come along as quickly as what they would like. You know, of course, Greg Olson, the tight end who they picked up, but they've just not had a lot of big plays throughout the season. Garrett Wolf is a guy who can provide that, and he has in this game, which helps set up this touchdown. See that bottom line. Most carries by any NFL player in the first half for Adrian Peterson with his 22 for 77 yards. And the Dallas Cowboys are watching this somewhere thinking, wow, go Chicago and take the pressure off that last weekend against the Redskins, especially if they're going to have to play that game without Terrell Owens. Warren Robinson takes it after it came to a dead stop. And he's tripped up at the 25. Nick Roach on the tackle again, an 11 yard return. Tonight on Fox at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, it's a heartwarming episode of The Simpsons you won't want to miss. Then get your popcorn ready. It's the action packed blockbuster Spider Man 2. The Simpsons and Spider Man 2 start tonight at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, right here on Fox. Well, T.O., you mentioned his injury. He had to put his popcorn on ice for a little while, didn't it? He did. But it, it did allow, and I think we all feel good about this, it allowed a chance for Drew Rosenhaus to get more airtime on the NFL Network. Yeah, I thought the network did a good job of getting Drew some airtime. Forty-two seconds left in the half. Ryan Grant has had a couple of big runs in this half. Had a little room there, but lost his footing, and it's only a one-yard run. Yeah, I think in light of everything that's happened here in this first half, Green Bay very much content going in 13-7. You know, Brett Favre said he'd be happy if he completed five passes in this game. Well, he's not even halfway there yet. He had two in the first half. Brett Favre's trying to lead him into the locker room. <laughs> Grant was tackled on that. He started heading off to get warm. End of the first half, 13-7. Chicago trying to upset the Green Bay Packers on a nasty day here in the Windy City. Visa Halftime Show coming right up after these messages. I'm going to go back to 1980. January right here, different surface on the field here at Soldier Field. Same type conditions, a lot of wind. It contributed to a nine-yard punt by John Ryan. He hung his head. The Bears went down and scored a touchdown lead by six. Second half coming up after this. As you look at everybody on the non-lake side of the stadium, they're in their seats. Everybody on the side away from us, they are not. It is really blowing against that side of the stadium. They've actually moved the yardage markers off that sideline because they were blowing onto the field. Kyle Orton, part of our fantasy update. You can check out these numbers and others on FoxSports.com. Ryan Grant, 97 yards. 
two big runs in that first half and Garrett Wolf two catches out of the backfield 38 yards. But I was saying it points out a couple of things the guys and gals in our trucks do a great job of putting those video pieces together and the other is there are a lot of people standing out in the cold braving the elements on our crew doing a great job here today. Here's Robinson stretching it out but not getting much after the catch just an 11 yard return Davis on the tackle and very close to that tackle was our own Pam Oliver. Hey there Joe just a warning this could get ugly. Uh, while the, some might say that the weather <laughs> is holding the Packers down offensively Lovey Smith says no it's just my defense is doing a great job against Brent Favre today. Uh, he also said ultimately the winner of this ball game will come down to who runs the ball the best. Mike McCarthy echoed that remark to me later and um, he also also said we want to see more effort more energy from our group we've been flat all day that's all I got for you Joseph I'm watching you down there moving around after that report this is Ryan Grant off the left edge no gain Alex Brown there to make the play and so whether it's Pam down there or camera operators or Plastic plastic lunch plates or hot dog wrappers or whatever it seems to be getting worse down there wind wise as we go along. Well there's no question it's gotten worse and and this is the you know going in this direction for the Packers is is right into the teeth of it. You're not going to be able to throw the football nearly as effective not that you can the other way either but not nearly as effective going in this direction. Here's Grant Erlacher got his nose in there didn't make the tackle but slowed down Ryan Grant. Jamar Williams did make the stop a gain of four third down coming up for Green Bay and the extra wide receivers come into the game. You said it at the top and there's a guy Brett Favre who's completed two passes and this is really a different attack than when these teams first met earlier in the season in October. It's been four and five wide receiver sets for Green Bay but that hasn't been used much this afternoon. And with good reason. They do spread them out here. Out of the shotgun over the middle. It's picked up by Alex Brown. Favre's rough day continues as he throws the interception. First pick of the year for Alex Brown in this defense with just a couple of exceptions all day has played very well for Chicago. Yeah they bring a zone blitz they bring pressure off the edge they are going to drop Alex Smith right underneath it or Alex Brown excuse me and he, and Favre does not see him. I mean it, what appears initially is that he's going to have an open receiver catching the ball running with the ball in his hands and Alex Brown is able to get underneath that throw. Because of Hunter Hillenmeyer coming off the edge, Favre had to get it out of his hands. Here's Adrian Peterson. Nice carry on first down of five yards. That is the 287th career interception thrown by Brett Favre. And just by watching the trash blow around this stadium, it is going to get tougher to throw the ball as we go along at second and five for Chicago. Yeah, and Alex Brown getting his opportunity to play more today because of the injury to Mark Anderson. You know, Alex Brown, of course, was a starter a year ago. This year he lost his job to Mark Anderson and, you know, has been in the rotation, but great play here. Peterson to the 20. Two yards shy of the first down after picking up three. And I would say that a study of the two quarterbacks, Kyle Orton has handled the conditions better so far today than has Brett Favre. Yeah no doubt and you know I mean they they have been able to run the football you know Green Bay has run the ball but most of it came on the one long run there by Ryan Grant for the touchdown to whereas you know Chicago's been a little more effective running the football and they've not gotten some of the situations where they just had to throw the ball you know here on third and short it'll be interesting to see normally a passing down but will they run it. They do on third and two and Peterson is brought down right at the marker. Depends on the spot and it's right on it. Kyle Orton's quarterback rating is over 80 80.9 at this point. Brett Favre's quarterback rating is zero. Not very good. That's not good. 
But that's out of like 150 something. Well, and I, I will say that the, the offensive line again for the Chicago Bears just, you know, doing a good job. And, you know, for a group that has been criticized and, you know, they've not done a. But in this game, you know, especially especially when you get into a situation to where everybody knows that's predominantly what you're going to do is run the football. It becomes like a middle drill and you do that every week in practice. And what it is, is it's it's the interior guys, the seven defensive players on the on the defensive front. And then your inside guys running the football without secondary players. And it's just a running drill. And that's basically what this game has become. And that's what this down will become on fourth down. Fourth and inches. Quick snap, handoff to the up back McKee, and the fullback picks up the first down. Good push up front for the Chicago offensive line. McKee, who had a touchdown last week at Minnesota, gets the first down. And with just over 11 to play in the third quarter, the Chicago Bears are moving in again, leading by six. It's been a great year for Mike McCarthy. The kind of season he's put together after that win streak to end last year, an eight and eight record, 20 and 10 as the Green Bay Packers head coach. Play action from Orton and incomplete. Pass was intended for Greg Olson. And again, it didn't look like Olsen was turned around ready for the pass. It hit off a couple of bodies. Atari Bigby was back there for the Packers at second and ten. Well, Nick Barnett, the middle linebacker for Green Bay, he was able to again get pressure on Kyle Orton. So, you know, Kyle Orton not able to hold it and wait probably as long as what he would have liked to have gotten Greg Olson turned around. You know, last week, Nick Barnett doing a great job, probably the best game of his season with two sacks and, and 12 tackles in that game. Peterson carries it. On second and ten, picks up three. Aaron Campman, the first to get his hands on him. Yeah, this has been, Troy, a, a Green Bay defense that went back-to-back -back weeks at Dallas, at Oakland, with no sacks. They started opening it up, bringing the blitz. They did so last week at St. Louis, came away with four sacks, three by linebackers, two for Barnett, one for A.J. Hawk. This is a different type day, however. Oh, yeah, there's no question. And all season long, they've gotten pressure with their front four. You know, all of their sacks except four came from their defensive front, and three of those that were not were last week, as you said. Third and seven over the middle. Pass is caught by Olsen. And that rolling grab sets up first and goal from the four. Good catch. Yeah, and right now that's been the biggest difference between, you know, the Green Bay Packers and then the Chicago Bears is that they're converting on third downs when they get in those situations. Nick Barnett, who's in coverage there, you know, just basically lets Greg, lets Greg Olson get in behind him. And he does a good job of making the catch on a ball that was not an easy one to catch. Peterson. How about that? Prior to the snap, you could hear Kyle Orton ask Olin Cruz. He said, "Where do you want to go?" Oh, he said, "I want to go at 56." That was Nick Barnett. It's now second and goal. Yeah, and the reason that he's asking is it, it's not so much important on running plays, but when you get into passing plays. Protection is established based on who is designated as the middle linebacker. So Nick Barnett is that guy. I want to go to 56. So now when they get in that situation on a passing down, they're not giving it away because they're not only asking that on passing downs. Second and goal. Back in the end zone. Clark wide open. Touchdown. will go for two. Well, you see the release. I mean, you go play action, you run the football fairly effectively, effectively enough. 
But down here on the goal line, you get all those linebackers think and run, and you're able to get a tight end like Clark out to the corner and an easy touchdown. You could certainly make a case that this early you don't go for two and you take every point you can get. The Bears with eight and a half to play in the third quarter are going to try and make it a 14 point game. Yeah, I've never liked going for two until you get into the fourth quarter. Yeah, I know they go off their charts. There's no right or wrong answer to it. Tight end, Olsen. 21-7. These Bears fans are saying, where's Kyle Orton been all year? On a terrible day weather-wise, he has outplayed Brett Favre. 21-7 Bears. Flights, it's like having your own company. Hero Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And by the Ford Edge, spirit of a sports car, versatility of an SUV. In a rivalry that... Is like a collegiate rivalry. Michigan, Ohio State, Auburn, Alabama. It's Bears and Packers in the NFL, and Chicago trying to sweep this season series and trying to do it behind Kyle Orton, who's been very impressive as Corin Robinson is able to get it across the 25 yard line. 19 yard return. We'll take a break. Brett Favre will have to take the coat off and go back to the huddle. Let's the heater. The wide receivers are doing for the Green Bay Packers and on the other side. The Packers are on the colder side, it would seem. The wind blowing toward that side of the field. First down, Green Bay as they trail by 14. And this one is low. And a hit is leveled on Ruvel Martin. Hunter Hillenmeyer was back there, and Ruvel Martin, first it went off his hands, and then the hit by Brandon McGowan, who's been getting better and better after taking over the strong safety spot once held by Archuleta. Yeah, well, the Packers finally go to a five wide, which is what they're known for. They've been reluctant to do it because of the conditions. They did on first down there, but as you saw, the ball just being affected so much, you know, by the wind that it's hard to throw with any level of confidence, and Favre certainly is not. Out of the shotgun, pass complete to Driver. He's across the 30 to the 31, a five-yard completion, third down, and five coming up. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at what Green Bay has not been able to do today, they've not been able to sustain any drives. They've not converted on a third down yet. And they've tried running the football. They've tried doing some things that really aren't characteristic of what they've been about this season. And I sense that on this drive, they're just throwing caution to the wind and saying, hey, look, let's get back to what we do, regardless of what the current wind conditions are doing for us. Flushed out of the pocket, throws back across the field. It's incomplete. Incomplete for James Jones, who had two fumbles in the previous meeting in Green Bay. And so another three and out. Well, another three and out, and now another punt right into the wind for John Ryan. And that was a ball that that James Jones, you know, should have caught. It was a ball that was low, but not a difficult catch to make. It's been a long day for John Ryan. Catches that punt and it's blocked. Tillman, touchdown Chicago. Corey Graham. There is a penalty flag on the field. Sitting at the 27 yard line. Holding number 60 in the offense. That penalty is declined. Touchdown. That's on the long snapper, Rob Davis. That snap floated and fluttered back. John Ryan had to adjust to catch it. And Tillman 
came in there and got it with his right hand. Well, because the, the punt was a little slower than what it normally takes to get it off, and Tillman, he's done this before. He comes off the edge. Nobody gets near him. A pretty easy block for Tillman. He did that against Denver earlier in the season. And that was a solid block. Corey Graham ended up with a football, a rookie, in his hands in the end zone. And all of a sudden, it's 28 to 7. And the Dallas Cowboys are even closer to securing home field advantage for as long as they're alive in the postseason. Special teams on a day like this so important. Bull Peanut Tillman came in there and got him one. 28 7. John Ryan his head over on the sideline you talk about a rough day for a punter and the Packers have not handled the cold well not as well as the Chicago Bears have the Chicago Bears look like the Bears of old good defense special teams has played a large part and this is Corin Robinson Again, just scrambling to get up to the kickoff. He's too deep all day you, long. A great job by Corn Robinson getting on that ball. Just like Tillman got on this one. Off the foot of John Ryan. Graham the touchdown. A 21-point Chicago Bear lead. 28-7. And the defense for the Bears back on the field. They have had a smothering day on this Green Bay offense. is dropped. Grant ends up on top of it. Yeah, now the ball never even comes up. You see that Wells is not even able to get a grip on the ball to bring it up into Brett Favre's hands. And, you know, go back and take a look at the punt, the block by Tillman. Watch him here. And then he comes up and, and gets unblocked. Now, John Kuhn, who, who, who was the protector on that play, never saw it. No one saw Tillman sliding in as a gunner and then being able to rush the punter and block that. Second and 14. Quick throw, and the pass is complete to Bubba Franks, who's playing in his first game since October 14th. He's been out with a sprained knee. By the way, it's an impressive record that the Packers have put together. They've had two punts blocked today, the Packers have. And the last time they had a punt blocked was 1995 right here at Chicago. So bad weather and all. Think of the wind and a wet football. Late in the season, they had not had one blocked in 12 years. Well, and as Mike McCarthy said coming into the game, he really felt the special teams for the Bears was the strength of their team and that they were going to have to win in that phase. Clearly, Chicago has won that battle. Third down and six, and the pass is caught by Donald Driver. The throw was behind him. Good catch. 12-yard completion, first down Packers. Well, these receivers, if they don't know already, they're, they're going to find out real soon that there's not going to be a lot of throws that are going to be right where you want them to be, that, you know, the ball's coming in and it's moving while it's in flight, and you've just got to be prepared to make an adjustment and make a catch, and that was a good catch by Donald Driver on a ball that was thrown low and behind him. Jennings makes the catch for a first down. Favre got absolutely plastered before he threw that 20-yard completion to Greg Jennings. Yeah, Hunter Hillenmeyer, he comes inside. Favre never even sees him coming. I mean, it just lights him up as soon as he let go of the football. That was one of those I'm not real sure that Favre was going to get up, but he did. And he's able to complete the pass in the process. You don't see too many hits quite like that. You know, they just had to they've had to abandon the running game because of the score and just go to back to their five wide sets. Back to a four man rush and that one off the hands of Hillenmeyer and into the arms of Ruvel Martin for a first down that should have been picked. 
or at least knocked down, but it was deflected by Hunter Hillenmeyer. Knocked down if it's self-defense. I mean, that, that ball right there. You know, that's the one thing that when you talk to these linebackers, you know, when you're going against Brett Favre, it's one thing to say, hey, we're going to have opportunities for interceptions, but you got to make the catch. And if you're not used to catching balls coming at you that hard, it's very difficult then to do. Best drive of the day put together by Green Bay. And as I say that, Tommy Harris comes in and makes a play on Grant, a loss of two. Yeah, good job by Tommy Harris. And, and he is one of those players that has been banged up all season long. And I know he's gained a lot of my respect on the fact that, you know, he came into the year, he had the hamstring surgery in the offseason. He, he battles through that. He's had back injuries, he's had knee injuries, and yet he keeps showing up. He hasn't missed any games. and. He's got seven sacks. I mean, he's had a productive year considering all that he's battled through. Second and 12, far middle of the field, incomplete. Manning down there defending Donald Lee. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Speaking of Manning, Eli Manning threw an interception to start the second half. Buffalo takes advantage. Marshawn Lynch with a touchdown. It's 21-17 Bills. Joe and Troy, every point in this game scored in the end zone going from left to right. You don't think the win has any effect on this one, do you? Oh, yeah. Right now the Giants are on the move going the other way with a first down. Down by four. Here it's a 21-point Chicago lead. before a third and 12. So Favre will come talk about it. Third down and 12 for Green Bay when we come back. Just looking into the face of Favre, you can see how uncomfortable he is out on that field, just putting a hand warmer, rubbing it on his face as he deals with third and 12 in what is probably four down territory considering the elements and the score. up as he throws completes to Jennings penalty flag at the end of the play and it's an offensive pass interference call Pass interference offense number 85 the 10 yard penalty is still third down in other conditions, you'd say, well, decline the penalty and make it fourth down, but they're in a spot where they would go for it, Green Bay, so Chicago accepts, and it moves the ball back to the 39-yard line. Green Bay has to get it up inside the 17-yard line for a first down. Well, and I know in talking with Brett before the game, this was the area of the field, you know, down in here, the 40-yard line, trying to drive the ball because of the wind that he felt was going to be the most problematic. So it's not going to be easy for him to be able to drive the football and get to where he needs to get to to maybe go for it for fourth down. Pass is incomplete for Donald Lee. And now we'll see what the decision is. Probably punt with the length needed to get a first down. And here comes John Ryan. But this has been the most adventurous part of the day with John Ryan on the field as Donald Lee could not haul that one in. Now from what we've seen out of John Ryan and this punt team, you know, as crazy as it sounds, maybe they should be going for it here on fourth down. Packers had gone 929 straight punts without having one blocked. Ryan has had two blocks today. They don't come after him here. And this one is into the end zone. So Chicago with a 21 point lead takes over at their own 20. What has this day been like at Soldier Field? The 
answer to that question is it has been a disastrous day for Green Bay. As Garrett Wolf takes it out near the 24. Well, and right now is where Green Bay really does miss a guy like Ryan Pickett. And, you know, in addition to that, some of the injuries that they've had along that defensive line. I mean, right now, because of the situation in this game, Chicago clearly would like to run the football and start taking as much time off this clock as possible. And what is Green Bay going to be able to do about it? I mean, that's the big question. So far, they've really not been able to do much. Second down and six. Garrett Wolf off the right side. And Michael Montgomery steps up and makes the play. You know, you and I have always remarked to each other that even when Rex Grossman was injured a couple of years ago, this Bears organization was convinced that they had their quarterback. And we know how that has played out. The other question that at least I always had is how were they so convinced that Kyle Orton wasn't their quarterback after going 10 and 5 as a rookie. Yeah the numbers weren't that great but he did win 10 games before handing off to Grossman at the very end of the season and into the playoffs and that loss against Carolina and Orton has been very impressive here today. Third and seven. Jay Hawk with help underneath from Corey Williams. It's fourth down. You know, I think to answer that, Joe, with Kyle Orton, even though they won 10 games when he was a rookie, nobody felt that they were winning games because of his play and because he was not a first round pick like Rex Grossman was. You didn't have Lovey Smith coming out and saying, hey, we're 10 and 3 with our quarterback, you know, Kyle Orton. We're 10 and 5 with Kyle Orton. You know, so they put him on the shelf. They went with Rex Grossman, and they watch him every day. And that's why I said a little bit earlier, as well as Kyle Orton has played here, I don't think there's anybody within the organization that thinks that Kyle Orton is going to be the guy, regardless of how well he plays, going into next season. Green Bay came after Maynard didn't get there. And it takes a good Chicago bounce. It'll roll out of bounds near the 32. Time left on the clock, third quarter into the fourth we go, 28-7. Chicago back after this from your local Fox Station. You seem different. I am. There's our own Oliver down there, all bundled up on the sideline. Microphone tucked into that coat. It is cold down on the field. Andy Mitchell. One of our camera operators, we saw Chevy earlier. And, and there's Keith. I mean, you can't see, you can't see who any of these people are underneath. You can barely, there's Mike Tatamir who's got his heater. Fox has spared no expense to make sure Mike is warm. Game break coming. We start the fourth quarter here in Chicago. There's a screen for Morenci, and he on first down picks up seven. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, a couple of plays that'll make Howie Long smile. The Saints on fourth down against the Eagles. Aaron Stecker, no chance. Philly holding on to the lead. Then in Buffalo, Giants have a first and goal from the half-yard line. Four plays. They don't get into the end zone. The Bills stop them and hold on to the lead. See, it's not all about offense, Joe. Not at all, and it's, I would say, defensively been a good day for Chicago. Here at Soldier Field, second and three. Far, nowhere to go, except down. Alex Brown, the first guy there. A Gunlier came in after a loss of four. Yeah, and this time they were going to try to finally get something going down the field, and, and Favre just couldn't find anywhere to go with it. No one open, doing a good job in coverage underneath, and then outside one-on-one -on -one with Charles Tillman on James Jones. And before Favre could even do anything else other than that, he's, he's under attack by Alex Brown and good pressure inside by this Bears defensive front. Matt Tolina was in there as well, a guy that the Bears just picked up from Cincinnati off their practice squad. 
third down and seven over the middle. Jennings had to wait for it, makes the catch, survives the hit, and a 17-yard completion for first down. Yeah, that was a good throw there by Brad. And, and if the Packers are going to have any opportunity to get back into this ball game, this is a critical possession for them. I mean, I see it as though they have to be able to move down the field and come away with a touchdown in order to put any kind of pressure back on Chicago. Underneath, Morenzi out of the backfield of the 35, and Troy to bring back something you said earlier. They also, in this fourth quarter, albeit down by 21, seem to be going in the better direction if they want to throw the ball and complete passes because the other way, nothing's happening. Yeah, I mean, the, the other way, you're throwing into the wind, so you really can't drive anything, but even though you have the wind at your back, when you're talking about 30, 40 mile an hour winds, it still is impacting the ball flight, which is hard then to get the ball down to where you need it. Here's Jennings. It was tipped, and he still caught it. Now he put it on the ground. They're blowing the play dead back at the 15, and they say incomplete now. Jennings had it, lost it when he hit the ground, and let's take another look. Right now they're saying incomplete. It you was tipped by Erlacher. Yeah, Erlacher gets the tip, and good concentration is almost able to make the catch off his helmet, but you know, I think that's a good ruling there by the official. Erlacher doing a good job getting underneath the route, and, and it looked like he never quite had possession when he was coming down off the helmet before it came out of his hands. That was a good call. And it's third and six. Out of the shotgun on third down, Favre swings it. Incomplete. Erlacher got his hands on it. And it's fourth and six. Well, Brian Erlacher, I mean, this is what he does within this Tampa 2 scheme is he drops to the middle of the field and he and he's got such good range for a middle linebacker that, that I don't think Brett ever saw him. But he reads his eyes and, and almost has an interception. It goes back to what we talked about a little bit earlier. It's one thing to get there. It's an entirely different task trying to catch the ball. Jennings limped off the field after that incompletion. It's fourth down. Blitz over the middle, driver, big first down, Green Bay inside the 25 to the 24, an 11-yard completion, and Favre knew right where he was going with it. Yeah, not surprising, two things. One, you'd throw the ball to Donald Driver, and then two, that you'd hit him on a slant. I mean, that really is the bread and butter for the Green Bay Packers. 12 minutes to play, Favre drops it down to Morenci. A couple of good moves, and he picks up nine and a half. It depends on the spot. And they've given Morenci enough for a first down. So a 10-yard catch and run. And it's a first down inside the 15-yard line. Just inside the 14. And Mike McCarthy going to work over on the sideline, trying to get back into this game. Cruise down the sideline and coast for the touchdown. No flags. He's still playing. 85 yard interception return. And how'd he catch this after it banged off his shoulder pad and arm and then showed his speed? Well, again, it was Hunter Hillenmeyer who was coming on pressure, unblocked, and that's why Favre had to unload it. See the pressure there and the hit by Hunter Hillenmeyer. And, and you're right, Joe. I mean, one where he could have had an interception a couple plays earlier. He makes a great catch on that interception. On their way to a 
season series sweep over their rival Green Bay Packers of the Chicago Bears. Erlacher, his eyes to the video board, knew he was all alone, coasting to make it 35-7. The Green Bay Packers to Chicago and been hit in the mouth. And Brian Erlacher is sucking on some oxygen. Here's a guy with an arthritic back going to end the season for the first time quote unquote healthy and not make the Pro Bowl and he's still playing his heart out. Intercepted Favre in Green Bay earlier in the season. This is Will Blackman and he has an interception for a touchdown here today. And Brett Favre never saw number 54. And on his way to the end zone, number 54, never saw anybody wearing yellow and white. Last four road games, four degrees. Brett Favre, one touchdown, seven interceptions coming into today. No touchdowns, two interceptions, a 48 completion percentage. Maybe he doesn't want a home game in late January. Here's Ryan Grant. By the way, Greg Jennings has just gone into the locker room to retape an ankle. We'll keep an eye and an ear on his status. And we will go for a game break after the next play. After Grant picked up a yard on first down. You know, you wonder why Brett Favre is even still in the game. I mean, at the score right now at 35-7 and under 11 minutes in the fourth quarter, I mean, it's highly unlikely that they're going to be able to get back into this ball game. And, and right now, I think you'd just like to try to preserve as many players as what you can. Obviously, next week, they'll be able to rest a number of them. But I think you're just taking a chance on losing your key guy. Here's Corin Robinson makes the catch and hops out near midfield. Let's go for the game break now. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, of course, Green Bay's already in the playoffs. Saints fighting to try and stay in the race. But Philadelphia is having a good day against them. Greg Lewis with the second touchdown pass from McNabb. And they're up 31-17. That was in the third quarter. Joe? All right, Kurt. It makes us think about the rest of the playoff picture. The top end of it's pretty clear. But it gets really interesting as you go down to the wild card chase with the Giants, the last report losing at Buffalo, and then Minnesota. Here's Lee, makes the catch, brought down by Alex Brown. Troy, that game tonight is huge between the Minnesota Vikings and the Washington Redskins. Both are definitely alive. You look at New Orleans, they're in trouble today. But the Giants aren't guaranteed of anything. And Minnesota, they've won five straight. They appear, of that group, to be the most dangerous team. Yeah, I, you know, there's no question that tonight's game is, is a big game. And the Giants, if they're not able to beat Buffalo today, I mean, they're going to have their hands full next week in New England. They could, they could theoretically see themselves outside the playoff picture and sitting home in January. Underneath, it's Grant makes a move and picks up a first down. You know, kind of like what you've talked a little bit about in this game that I know there's a lot of people back home in Dallas sitting on their couches right now watching this game with a big smile on their face, knowing that they're going to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. You, know, you think back to the last time the Cowboys met the Packers, you know, just a few weeks ago and, you know, Dallas jumped out on them early and then Aaron Rodgers came in for an injured Favre and played exceptionally well. That was a heck of a game. Good play by Jamar Williams. A loss of one as he knocks down Ryan Grant. And Jamar Williams has played well in place of Lance Briggs, and the Bears have to figure out at the end of the year how much they want to spend on Lance Briggs, and Lance has to figure out if he wants to come back. And those numbers, again, for Brett Favre in his career against Dallas at home, 2-0, six touchdowns, one pick, and on the road, 0-9 at Texas Stadium, 12 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Second and 11. Brandon Jackson in the backfield. And now a fan is out on the field, so we'll have a delay. So second down and 11 as that fan is apprehended at the 34-yard line. That might have been uh, one of the better tackles that I've seen today that the security guard put on that goal. <laughs> oh 
So that person is led off the field and we'll get back to a second down and 11. Again, Greg Jennings limped off the field. They say he's just gone in to retape an ankle. Jennings, a guy with coming in 50 catches, 12 touchdowns among those 50 catches. The Pro Bowler for Brett Favre is Donald Driver, who was over 500 catches in his career, one of three to do it in a Packer uniform. All with Green Bay, Lofton, Sterling Sharp. Okay, here we go. And now Driver. But he has only two touchdowns. Far throws, sideline, Robinson had fallen down. And the pass nearly picked off by Tillman. Well, Brett Favre has had a rough day. Not a whole lot of protection. The wind, the ball has sailed on him. It's not gone where he is trying to put it. Been picked off a couple of times. Many more opportunities for this Bears defense, and the latest was Erlacher with that 85-yard return for a touchdown. And you knew in talking with Brett before the game that he anticipated that it was going to be a tough game for him. I'm with you. There are a lot of Packer fans that are holding their breath on this cold day, hoping that Brett Favre doesn't get injured on some freak hit. Then you say, well, history tells you he always answers the bell. He's... You know, you don't, but this is a 38 year old guy playing on a frigid day, and if he gets one hit the wrong way, Mike McCarthy will never forgive himself in a 35 to 7 game that's out of hand. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for me. I know Aaron Rodgers, he's the third quarterback today. He's still coming back from a hamstring injury, but they do have Craig Knoll, and he does know the offense. Here's Brandon Jackson. And the rookie with a nice carry. Second round pick out of Nebraska, good for 15. Here's Kurt Menefee in a game break. The Giants with a couple of chances to take the lead against Buffalo, but they can't do it. Eli fumbles the snap at the 10-yard line. Bills recovered. Now, earlier in the half, the Giants had four cracks on the half-yard line, didn't get in, and so they're still down 21-17 in the fourth quarter. Joe, Troy, and Pan. All right, Kurt, thank you. First down for Green Bay. Chicago 12, Ryan Grant, Israel Donage, who's been a good player for Chicago this season. You know, if nothing else, Joe, as far as Brett Favre still being in the game and, and playing here late in the fourth quarter with the score what it is, if nothing else, maybe, maybe Mike McCarthy's just saying, hey, look, we've struggled offensively. Let's try to get something going here. But, you know, even if that is the thought process, you know, from Mike McCarthy, I don't agree with it. You know, just because of who it is that we're talking about and how vital he is to this team's success once they get into postseason play. Ryan Grant's at 100 yards for the day, and Brett Favre can't corral the snap and just ends up grabbing and laying down on the ground. I was going to say, you know, you see that ball come out, and it's just... <laughs> I mean, it's not a it's not a long distance there from the center to the quarterback. It gives you a good indication as to how much it's blowing, just moving it. And sometimes it's better in these conditions just to not even get into shotgun formation to avoid that. We've had a number of problems as we've seen with shotgun shotgun snaps as well as the snaps on the punts. Third and 14 now. This one's batted down. That's happened all day. Jamar Williams got his hands up. Corin Robinson, the intended receiver. Now it's fourth and 14. You, know, you mentioned Jamar Williams a little bit earlier and, and what his you know, role is going to be moving into next year. He would have been the starter for the Chicago Bears had they not have signed you know, Lance Briggs right when they were getting ready to start the season. He's a guy who can play all three linebacker positions. I know that in talking with Lovey Smith, he's not showing them anything here today that they already don't know about him. He's a, he's going to be a quality player. It's just a matter of when. It, it sounds more and more like it's going to start next year. A blitz from Chicago. Corin Robinson, good luck. Penalty flag on the play. And if the play stands, the Bears take over. 
It's a false start against Green Bay. Illegal formation on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty is declined. First and 10, Chicago. And we've heard the difference in years past between illegal formation that doesn't shut down the play so the play continues backers turn it over on downs all chicago here today at soldier field this is sponsored by yoda moving forward first play is a handoff to adrian peterson he is going to need to Get into a hot tub at the end of this one. He has been running all day. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. We told you about the Giants' offensive struggles against the Bills, so why not lean on the defense? Lee Evans helps out off his hands, right into the arms of Kavika Mitchell. He takes it back for the score, and the Giants have a lead 24-21 in the fourth quarter. Remember, Joe, a Giants win, and they're in the playoffs. So that's what's dangling out there in front of them. And again, Minnesota has a leg up for the other wild card spot. They take on the Redskins tonight. Second and four. Adrian Peterson, not only has he had a busy day, he's had an effective day running the football. It depends on the spot as to whether that's enough for a first down. And really the tone was set for this game, Troy, with that first possession that covered over 10 minutes off the clock. Went right down the field. Chicago only got the field goal, but they ran it right down Green Bay's throat. Yeah, they sure did. And I, I think right now, you know, what's interesting is watching that game last night with Dallas and Carolina. Dallas over the last three weeks has not looked all that good. They're not playing their best football, whereas Green Bay coming into this game, they've been playing pretty well here over about the last five or six weeks. And, and now today they did not. And off to McKee. Jason McKee has a first down. You may or may not know as the ball came out and now they're going to start fighting and wrestling and the umpire is right in the middle of it. He takes out Nick Barnett. It's Jim Quirk without the hat and he had a tick. He had a takedown and there are no flags on the ground so the officials got in the middle of that and made sure that Nothing big happened between these two. There's Quirk wrestling Barnett. Yeah, I'll say. It's like Don Zimmer and Pedro <laughs> he Martinez. <brought> him. <laughs> he had a he had a little better showing than uh, than old Don Zimmer though. Zim. Game offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Orton's going. Wait, they didn't reset the play clock. We got umpires taking down middle linebackers. Cats chasing dogs, popcorn boxes flying around this place, and <laughs> how'd the play clock run out? <laughs> Tell you one thing that Orton's done, it's something that fans around here have criticized the quarterback play about over the last two years, is he has not made mistakes to cost him. And like you said earlier, Levy Smith liked to say, well, we're 10 and 3 with Rex Grossman as our quarterback. And to really take Rex Grossman out of it, Orton, it's not been a fantastic day, but he has certainly handled the elements, handled this offense, got him moving in and out of the huddle, and he has not made that killer mistake dropping a snap, dropping the football that's hurt his team. Well, I agree, and, and he didn't do that when he was starting as a rookie either. I, I just think that it's going to be hard for the Bears to go into next season without making some other changes at the quarterback position and feeling like they've got their guy right here. It's Garrett Wolf. I, mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. You know, they, they did that last year with, with Rex Grossman and felt that, okay, we're going to go through another offseason. We need better production at that position, and they didn't get it. And as Lovey said, our only chance is we've got to be more productive at quarterback, and I just don't know that they're going to go into next year and say Kyle Orton, regardless of how well he plays, that he's going to be the guy. Two minutes left in this one. Chicago up by 28. Good special teams play and the defensive work, the touchdown by Erlacher helps to 
explain why and here we go again. Yeah, there's just no point in any of this. I mean you see Nick Barnett getting in there and shoving people around and he's had too good a year to get involved in something like this. The Bears have taken it to the Packers all day long and to now act like you're going to get frustrated and actually get involved in a play is a little childish. It's Garrett Wolf who's underneath there and Barnett wouldn't get him off, would not get off him, and now it's fourth down. I started to say the special teams play and the defensive touchdown and the work done by this Chicago defense explains why Green Bay has actually outgained Chicago in total yardage, 264 to 238, and a delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still down. Troy, you talked about the decisions that are coming up for Jerry Angelo, the GM here. You can look at some of the decisions that have been made here and really scratch your head and question them, not fortifying the quarterback position more than Brian Greasy over this past offseason. Cedric Benson, Jerry is way out on the number four pick a year ago in the draft. Uh, it's an old offensive line, although they've played well here today. Maynard gets off a booming punt. Defensively, what do they do with Lance Briggs? The money paid to the cornerbacks. 35-7, a minute five left. Green Bay takes over. AT&T was coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie, and Jimmy scores and highlights prior to that bonus coverage of that very important game for the Giants as they lead by three over Buffalo. Buffalo with a football out across their own 35 with nine and a half minutes to play in that game. Meanwhile, Favre is still out there with a minute five to go. And he hands to Brandon Jackson. The rookie gets nine and a half. Let's go for an update. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, you mentioned it, Joe, in Buffalo. The weather outside is frightful, but the Giants finding it delightful right now. They lead 24-21, about nine minutes left to play in regulation. We will get you to the conclusion of that game just as soon as you are done in Chicago. All right, thanks. There's Jeff Triplett with the styrofoam discus throw toward his head linesman. <laughs> the end of this one 30 seconds to go and this should be it second and one Jackson again and this Bears defense is still fighting them. a game produced by Richie Zients directed by Artie Kemner technical producer Joe Stevens technical directors Colby Bourgeois thanks to Steve Horn editorial consultant here in the booth and our great crew for braving the elements down there. It was a solid, if not spectacular, day for Kyle Orton. And it's an upset win for the Chicago Bears, big over the Green Bay Packers. That means that the Dallas Cowboys will wrap up home field advantage by sitting there on their heels at the conclusion of their win last night over Carolina. 35-7 back after this to wrap it up. The Green Bay will head back home on the heels of this loss. They're now 12 and 3. And our UPS leaderboard, UPS, what can Brown do for you? Kyle Orton over 100 yards, a touchdown throw. Adrian Peterson, a busy day. Greg Jennings did limp off with some sort of ankle ailment. Three catches, 42 yards for Green Bay. So that'll do it from Soldier Field. We will give you bonus coverage of that very important game in the NFC playoff picture with the Giants playing at Buffalo as we say so long. An impressive day for Chicago, all three phases of the game. A 28-point win over Green Bay. Let's go to Buffalo. I was asking all during the week, what do you play for in this kind of situation? You saw out there today, I think you saw the kind of determination it takes to win in the National Football League. And, and the next thing you want to know is, why haven't we seen that over the last few years? You saw the creativity on the offensive side, the defense getting after it. And here's the key, the offense taking advantage of the, the great opportunities that the defense gave them. Where was that all this time? Yeah, I mean, offensively, that's what it is. They took advantage of their opportunities when you look at the Bears' offense. And again, we saw that first drive. To me, that was the best Bears' drive all season. What did we see? The motions by the by the wide receivers, it screws up the fits. You saw Green Bay Packers' defense trying to adjust, and it screwed up a lot of fits in the Bears' run game. That's where it started today, and it built, it built uh, momentum as the game went on. Defensively, you saw a prideful group again getting turnovers, and that was huge and just ripping the heart out of the Green Bay Packers and home field advantage.
Zoom, what can I say after that? I mean, the Bears really got after him this game. You know, all phases of the football game, offense, defense, special teams, everything they got after him today. They made plays. The opportunities were there to make plays. They finally came away with that. Let's break down that first drive of the game. They go 18 plays, 67 yards, hold the ball for over 10 minutes. Their longest, uh, you know, series all season long, their longest drive all season long, they went 13 runs, four pass plays. Awesome. How Here's were they play. able to do it? Because Green Bay two knew things. they were going to run the football. Two things, though. They went a two tight end formation. Yeah. Right. And that's something, you know, we've been looking for a little bit. Because then you have the threat of those tight ends running those seam routes. That's one thing we talked about. The other thing was they came out of the eye formation. And I believe that the running backs that they have are better off out of the eye formation. Say, so, well, why? Well, because they get an opportunity to actually see the play develop rather than running from uh, maybe three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage. This is where he's seven yards back, gets a real good picture of what's happening up front, and then does his job accordingly. The other thing he gives is the fullback a chance to bust up in there and get a good block at the point of attack. Right? Yeah, for me, what was, you know, was huge, Green Bay went a lot of man coverage, and what that means, those safeties were creeping up, uh, and they ran a cover two shell. And so, again, by putting the wide receivers in motion, it screws up the fits of the defense. We talked about Garrett Wolf in space repeatedly today. Saw him on the backfield making catches, which in weather, like it is today, is huge. And it, it affected the Green Bay Packers because they missed some tackles, and he got big plays in space, and that's what you need from speedsters. We've ripped some of the play calling this year. Certainly, Ron T er, Turner's taken a brunt of that. What did you think of the play calling today? Uh, I, I Obviously, like the fourth <laughs> and one, it. they did a nice loved job. It. Loved it. Uh, you know, and, and that's... It, what, can, what else can you say? That's what we've been asking for is to show some motion. And Jim's explained the reasons why. You know, run some two tight end sets. Give, you, give them some varying looks and, and run off of that motion as well. And that's what they did today. And it worked out great. And here's the other deal. The offensive line was coming off the football and moving people around. And you've got to have that if you're going to have any success running the Definitely. football. You want to know what was awesome too uh, today when, when you talk about the two tight end sets Jigs was talking about. In, in days like today when it's so windy, you can't run the slants or routes on the move. Now you got to run more Y options. You saw Greg Olson catch a couple big passes that got some first downs. Because that way, if you're if you got your if you're squared up to the quarterback, you can react to the ball when it gets blown in the wind. So that was big. And with the with it windy like it was today, it actually cut down the playbook because you got to go right at him. It takes out the deep passing routes, and then they start to connect it on the screen passes. Best timed up, timed up screen passes all year oh, by the Bears it's, it's, today. It was awesome. What we're See, remember a couple of weeks ago we were getting on Garza because. He missed the block out front, and I can't remember, maybe it was Olin on the other side. Today you saw how you time up a screen. You get that separation in between the running back and the oncoming defensive lineman. Let them get close to the quarterback. He dumps it over the top. The linemen automatically get out and get on their blocks, and then everything turns out great it's, before it. And that's like what happened today. Off balance too. They had a great running attack. They had a great passing attack. So they were nice and balanced, and it was good to see that. Kyle Orton is set to address the media here live at Soldier Field. It is brought to you by Amco Transmissions. Let's listen to today's starting quarterback of the Bears. I just felt really patient out there today. We ran 13 of the first 18 minutes. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, with the wind more than, you know, it was cold, but I have a beard, so it helps out a little bit. It's kind of warm in this area but no we wanted to uh, get off to the run and run the football and and uh, controlling the clock and I think our first drive was 10 minutes long and uh, it really set the tempo and, and really uh, got us off to a good start yeah it was a uh, you know a big uh, you know big spot in the game and, and you know, uh, had a good look and, and, you know, Moose, you know, it just dropped, you know, it was, it was, a, it, you know, tough to throw the ball, it's tough to catch the ball, you know, the ball was moving all over the place, you know, but, uh, you know, that's a play that we expect him to make and I'm sure he expects it, but um, luckily we were able to overcome it and, and move on and, and um, score points. Kyle, were you surprised that you guys were calling, I mean, 14 isn't a ton of pass plays, but it seemed like you were using the full complement of the offense considering the conditions? We threw it when we had to, uh, and I thought we threw it pretty effectively for the, uh, for the uh, conditions. Um, certainly, we kind of took out most of our deep pass plays, obviously, and and uh, threw more high percentage passes. But guys made guys made plays. Uh, Garrett, Garrett Wolf broke the uh, long screen pass, and and uh, Bernard had a nice catch, and where he, you know, had some yards after the catch. So, guys certainly made plays when they had the chance. 
Well, you, I mean, it kind of naturally pushed it down, but you certainly didn't want to get one up into the air. So most of my passes, I try to just throw hard and, and you know, keep it inside the guy's body. Uh, when you try to throw it up in the air, then you had no idea where it was going. So um, I don't wear gloves. That's, I've never done it. So um, I just don't feel comfortable doing it. But um, I just try to throw it hard and, and put it inside the guy's body. I don't know. It was worse than, uh, you know, San Francisco, obviously, a couple of years ago. It might have been more windy, but didn't have the cold factor with it. And, you know, this is these are pretty bad conditions. Were you surprised that you were able to dominate the ball in three feet the way you were? Well, you know, you never know how you're going to react when you, you know, obviously we're out of the playoff hunt and, and um, you know, hopefully you show up and play well uh, and shows a lot of character for our team, you know, to, to be able to show up today and, and play hard and, and uh, beat, a, beat a good football team in the Packers. But um, <clears throat> when, you, when you score on special teams like we did and have Brian run back a long interception return, uh, you know, that's kind of when it got out of hand. Does it, does it um, move anything special to it? Have really have game as well? Yeah, I mean, it's a... Uh, like we said all week, when you're playing your uh, your rival, uh, you know it'd be great to sweep them, and that's what we did this this season. You know we don't have a whole lot of goals left, but that was one of them to, to be able to go two and zero against the Packers this year, and and they're a good football team, and and, and we um, came out and played well. Pers oh, he's he's a great quarterback, and and so it's gonna be something good to look back on and, and say that I've I've beaten them, and um, it was a great team performance, and and. Um, I don't, you know, there's not much I can say about it. I don't even know what those comments were. I, I don't read the paper or anything, so I want to know. Yeah, certainly it's been a frustrating year for us, and, and like I said, we haven't been able to accomplish a lot of our goals, but uh, that's one of them that we've had uh, since the beginning of the season is to sweep the Packers, and and um, it's kind of bittersweet, I guess. Kyle, it, it said that the rivalries aren't the same as some of the players change the team. Before. Is this one endured? I think this one is. You know, obviously... Uh, I think it has to be with with how how much hatred is between the fans. You know, uh, they they kind of force the rivalry upon you. So you're walking down the street and uh, they let you know about the rivalry. So you learn you learn about it pretty quick. Anything else? Thank you. It's Kyle Orton after the 35-7 victory over the Packers. KO goes eight of 14, 101 yards, the one touchdown. Of course, he had the drop there that Musa Muhammad should have had. On fourth down, Brett Favre 17 of 32, a buck 53, and he had the two interceptions. I'm going to ask you, Jim, playing in these conditions, not an easy yeah. chore for a quarterback. Your thoughts on the way Kyle was able to handle himself? You know, today. we always talk about being a manager of the game. I thought he did a great job being a, a manager of this Bears offense today. That is not easy conditions to throw the football. Very effective. The one Moussin drop, he probably could have had a higher percentage and another touchdown, so his rating would have been even higher. But again, a couple false starts, but got the guys in line, got the run game going, and hit the throws he had to throw. You can ask for a better game out of Kyle Orton You today. know, it was, it was one of those things where we were talking about taking what the defense gives you, and that's yeah. what they were doing today. We're taking what the defense is giving them, and then taking a little bit more in that run game. And that's what really kind of led the offense to run out these nice, long, solid drives. Zoom, were you surprised the way Favre and company played considering what they had online? They needed to win today to continue to keep pace with Dallas. But wait, right. before we get that, Lovey Smith and Cetro Dress the Media here live at Soldier Field. Lovey is brought to you by AT&T Real we, uh, Yellow talk about All phases, uh, you know, contributing to, to us being able to win. And we had that. The fans, of course, were outstanding on a day like, on a day like today. Uh, we knew we were going against a tough team. Uh, Mike has done a great job with the Packers, you know, as they go into the playoffs. So, but for us, we thought we talked about, you know, just trying to get some work done these last couple games. Last year, they came in and beat us pretty bad and haven't lost a lot since then. So that was kind of our tone to kickstart this next run that uh, hopefully we can make.
But offensively, uh, especially early on, we moved the ball a lot. We got the running game going with Adrian Peterson. Uh, Garrett Wolf did some good things. Of course, uh, Kyle Larden threw the ball well, managed the game, did all of those things. Uh, so it was good to get some, some things going on the offensive side. Defensively, it's about takeaways. Of course, uh, we, we talked a lot about not being able to score all year on the defensive side. It's been a long time. I don't think we've gone through a season without having at least one defensive score. So it's good to see Erlacher get in uh, in the end zone. Of course, he's had two great games back to back. Uh, Charles Tillman uh, and our special teams, Dave Tobe, Kevin O'Day, have done a great job with them. Just had all three phases uh, kicking in today. Uh, you know, helping us, uh, you know, get a win against a, a good opponent. Injury-wise, uh, didn't have a lot of injuries. We had a few that, um, you know, that we dealt with. You know, we had a few get players that weren't able to go. Hopefully we'll have them ready to go next week and we'll be at full force. Question. Tommy, you were without four defensive starters today. How do you account for what that side of the ball was able to do then against Brett Favre and that offense? It says a lot. Um, you know, to do that, you know, they and just look at their record and what they've been able to do against everyone. Uh, but, you know, guys are looking for a chance to play. Jamar Williams, Trumaine McBride, is, of course, has played quite a bit anyway. Uh, you know, Alex Brown getting his first start in a while, big interception, sack, just playing good ball throughout. Uh, you know, the young defensive lineman that we've, you know, we brought in last week contributed again. You know, the defense has taken a lot of shots uh, with our play that we've had this year. But I thought last week we took a step, even though the yardage, you know, they had a few yards against us. And I really thought this week we took another. Coach, can you talk about, you know, one of your big goals that you took the job with the Packers and you swept them, but you're not going to the playoffs. I don't know if it's a little bittersweet. Is it a good feeling today, looking like Mike might have been, or is it just a great feeling? Well, we talk about our three goals. Our, our ultimate goal is to win the world championship. And to win the world championship, normally you have to win the division. But uh, beating your rival is big, too. Uh, we're disappointed in our season. But we can't do, you know, when we played the Packers today, couldn't do a lot about that. The only thing we could do was get a win against them and have an opportunity to sweep them, uh, which is saying a lot. It's good for our team to see, you know, that we, you know, we can still play a little bit of football and, and to see the type of team that we can be when we take care of some things. Coach, this is your kind of game today. It's a running game and take away from special teams. Do you personally, is it extra satisfying to win a game exactly the way you want to draw it up? Uh, definitely so. That's where we're as a team. Uh, the weather, of course, was a factor. But for us, we're set up to play. Uh, through conditions like this. So, yes, I mean, it's good to see us where we can run the football and, and uh, not turn the ball over at all. I should have said that, too. That was big, of course. We've done a pretty good job of that lately. But, and then having a defense close it, you know, close out the win. Coach, you lost the Packers last year and you made run to the Super Bowl. Um, the Packers losing to you today, do you see this game taking no, I think they're a good football team. I mean, they've gone, you just look at how they've won this year. They've beaten a lot of good teams. Um, and I, they have as good a chance as anyone uh, to, to take a run in the playoff. All set, everyone. Thank you. There's Lovey after the 35-7 victory. We're back here at the Cadillac Club. At Soldier Field, taking a look at Kyle Orton. Six of 11 in that first half, two of three in the second half. He ends up with a quarterback rating for the day of 103.6, 115.3 in the second half. A lot of questions filtering here on ComcastSportsNet.com. This one from Joel in Plainfield. Will the play of Kyle Orton earn him a legitimate chance at starting quarterback next season? I begin with you, Jigs. Do you think from what you've seen in the last couple weeks from KO, that he deserves that kind of thought going into Well, you know, I, I've always been a big promote, proponent of giving everybody an equal opportunity at the job. I, I think that the competition really makes you play better. Uh, if you walk into the situation and the job is handed to you, just laid in your lap, I don't know then if you have as much of an appreciation for it as if you had to earn it. 
when you have to earn it during the course of your, uh, the offseason and training camp, I think then you have a greater appreciation for it and you're very protective of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when you look at him, we, we said last week, he didn't hurt himself last week in Minnesota. Now his stock just went up, uh, beating Green Bay at home in those conditions, managing the game, managing the offense. And yeah, I think you're, you're right. See if you get feelers from other teams. Maybe he's a tradable commodity. You never know. You're probably going to draft another young quarterback. Do you take a shot at Donovan McNabb? Do you take a shot at Dante Culpepper? There's guys out there the Bears are going to have to look at and see if it's feasible for this football team. But yeah, competition brings out the best in everybody, and it definitely needs to be here at this position in Chicago. Competition is great, but you ultimately have to have a guy. I mean, you're one yeah. of the 15 quarterbacks that has faced Brett Favre since he started in Green Bay in 1992. Sure. There needs to be some stability at that a position. Absolutely. That's, again, we talked about leadership last week. That's one of the positions by default. You're a leader. You have to be. Your guys got to know that they can count on you week in and week out. You never want to be the guy that lets the team down. And it, the instability here at the quarterback position in Chicago has been a huge factor in that because it's, it's never been a steady rallying cry for, for everybody to, to surround and, the, and back them up. There's also a process, though, that you have to go yeah. through, I think. And, and maybe one of the problems has been is that the patients or lack thereof to go through that process to discover who is the guy out of these three, which one is going to really do it. When the, you know you first begin this whole process, of course Rex was the main man, and then that kind of went on for about a season and a half, and then things were kind of put up in the air. But I think this is a process that you're going to have to go through, and it may be a painful one to, to a certain extent. At, at the end of the day, it all comes down to who is everybody going to rally around. For the Cleveland Browns, it was Derek Anderson. They tried Charlie Fry, but hey, the team responds better to Derek Anderson in Buffalo. They tried J.P. Lawson. Who does the team respond better to? Trent Edwards. So it will define itself, but I think right now the team has responded pretty well to Kyle Orton. We're just getting started here on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. 35-7 the final as we come to you live from the Cadillac Club. Folks, getting a little warm on this uh, blustery day on the lakefront. Certainly the Bears have provided plenty of warmth for them today. Here is our Cadillac poll question. What do the Bears season sweep of the Packers mean to you? What does it mean? Is it A, makes the season, B, brightens up a bad year, C, makes the rest of the losses hurt even more, or D, doesn't matter, no playoffs? Log on to ComcastSportsNet.com, click Chicago, then on the Bears page, vote away. Also, click on our Post Game Live icon and send us a question or a comment. We're coming back right here on Comcast Sportsnet. The Cadillac Club inside field after the Bears take care of the Green Bay Packers 35-7 the final styling and profiling in the brand new Cadillac as the Bears improve to 6-9 and take the season series from the Packers for the first time since 2005. Folks fired up inside here yeah they're happy they're, they're no longer in the cold there was rough <laughs> conditions out there today let's talk about what the Bears defense was able to do again winning the turnover battle today we saw Brian Urlacher coming back with a pick six we saw Alex Brown step in for Mark Anderson today and also we did not see Lance Briggs on the field today Did that surprised you guys at all uh, it did me I, I mean I was coming and looking you know, for see Lance playing one of his last games maybe uh, in a bare uniform, but uh, he was nicked up today, and Jamar Williams came in and played pretty well for him. So uh, it's interesting sometimes the things that develop. But I will tell you this much: though, when you look at his body of work, that being Lance Brooks, Lance Briggs' outstanding body of work, they need him back on this defense. I'll tell you what: the, the cornerbacks did a heck of a job as well. Charles Tillman did a wonderful job, and also McBride stepped in. And, and shut down the, um, the wide receivers as well. Nathan Vasher was hurt, and he was sat down, but McBride stepped in there. In the first half, Brett Favre, now we're talking about a Hall of Famer, all pro type of guy, you know, nine yards. <laughs> nine yards in the first half. Totally shut him down, so you have to give those quarterbacks some credit. When, when you look at it, Jim, from what Briggs brings to the weak side linebacker position, and you saw Jamal Williams out there today, we saw what Ryan Grant was able to do. They right. were able to make some big cutbacks against yeah. the weak side. Well, the, the one big run, and that's what Green Bay did. They challenged, obviously, Jamar Williams early in the game. You saw the one big touchdown run, Ryan Grant. He overplayed it, basically should have stayed at the backside guard in the play. It was inside zone that would have cut back to him, and he overplayed it, obviously left the, the big gaping hole. So either way, it was going to be the story today. If he gave up big plays, ah, we need Lance Briggs back. If he played effectively, hey, we can let Lance Briggs go. But I thought overall, other than that one play, he had a pretty solid performance, and the defense looked great all day. Hey, I, I know we're going to do this a little bit later <laughs> on, but we had a discussion last week about grades for defense. Yeah. And, you know, I gave him an A, and you, you kind of felt a little differently. How would you grade the defense today? I'd say A. 
A plus. But they, had, they gave up a big run now. <laughs> no, la last week they ah. gave up 350 yards. 350 yards and 20 points last week. They only gave up seven today. Hey, let, let's talk about though the special teams because that's been the strongest unit on this team uh, for the last couple of years, and they certainly came through today with a couple of block punts, one of those resulting in a touchdown. You know on one of these weird type of weather days with the gusts coming off, the swirling winds on the lakefront, it does come down to special teams a lot, and the Bears have one of the best in the business. And they really got into the punter's head. He oh, yeah. couldn't, couldn't feel the snap. <laughs> he didn't guy, want to be I mean, out there. It was coming, and they were going sideways on it. <laughs> that's 15 yards back. I mean, that's a long way to launch that ball, and you've got to get the football. You've got to get some velocity on it. But if the problem is if it's not going straight back to that, to that punter, it's going 15, 20 yards past them. So they had to be kind of careful of that, and they had an outstanding rush on the punter. Yeah, the rush was definitely smelling blood. Yeah, They buddy. were coming after the punter. Charles Tillman was all over them. I mean, they blocked two punts today. You know, and that's outstanding. One directly for a TV, um, um, for a touchdown. Graham, University of New Hampshire, mm -hmm. might I add that, by the way. <laughs> Shout, <laughs> out. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. Hey, you know, but the Packers everybody had a basically punt stepped it up. 12 years? Yeah, 12 years. Right. 929 years a long time. punts. 929 punts. You got what two today. Was, yeah, what I thought was fun. Again, special teams, days like today, sets up field position. That was huge. The only one time the Bears didn't take advantage of it, and we mentioned when Musi Muhammad drops the touchdown pass, but Jigs talked about the wind was already in John <laughs> Ryan's head, the punter of, uh, of the Packers, but after the botch snap and then the block field goals, he was a mess the rest of the day. That was huge for they the Bears. just went on on a fourth down. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to hear either Bear weather. I mean, it was Bears weather, but this is the way it is at sometimes yeah, at right. Lambeau oh, Field as well. Here, yeah. And considering what they had to play for today to try to keep pace yeah. with the Dallas Cowboys, were you surprised by their, their effort out there? Yes, definitely.